And here's our host, Jian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight, coming to you live on CGTN from Beijing. We begin today's show here in China, where consumers have once again outspent themselves during the country's most spectacular day of online shopping, Double Double Eleven. The two biggest platforms, Alibaba and JD.com, both reported sales exceeding 200 billion yuan, big jumps from last year. Before we unpack this shopping frenzy going on in this country, let's take a closer look at the annual event. Buy, buy, buy is the gospel for W11, the world's biggest online shopping festival. As the clock struck 12 on November 11th, millions around China pressed the button, place order with rehearsed swiftness. In the first hour, sales on the platform reached 12 billion U.S. dollars, a number equivalent to the country of Madagascar's GDP in 2018. At the end of the 24-hour extravaganza, Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba reported a new record setting total sales of $38.3 billion. JD.com followed with $29.2 billion, up 30 percent. In comparison, Americans spent less than $8 billion on Amazon's Cyber Monday in 2018. This explains why despite the ongoing China-U.S. trade row, international brands have only shown increased enthusiasm to connect with the market in the East, learning ways to get into Chinese shoppers' hearts and pockets. As cheers for sales subdued, concerns are reflected upon. On the environment, billions of online orders will create many parcels waiting to be disposed. Some also question if the complex promotion rules are not just confusing, but fooling consumers. And lastly, the metaphysical contemplation of whether happiness can be bought. Double Eleven was invented a decade ago by an Alibaba executive to play with the idea of Singles Day. Ten years later, sales figures have skyrocketed, but the loneliness might still linger. For more discussion on single day or double eleven day shopping frenzy here in China, I'm joined in New York by Anthony Chen, former Chase Chief Economist at JP Morgan. In Shanghai, we have Professor Jeffrey Thompson, who run the from the Guanghua School of Management from Peking University. Last but not least in Beijing, Zhang Gong, professor from University of International Business and Economics based in Beijing. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. May I ask who shopped online <laughs> during China's uh, a double single day or double 11 day? Uh, uh, should I ask uh, John? John, did you do that? Uh, I am very proud to announce that I didn't do any shopping. Online. Oh, you're not contributing. <laughs> not that much. Uh, what about you, Jeffrey? <coughs> it's too busy. Well, I was actually in Hangzhou with Alibaba Management, so I actually spent some time with via the live streamer. Yeah, so I was but what kind about of, uh, money? Involved Did you in spend a little online? Bit. Now, <laughs> I, I'm pretty cheap. I don't spend much money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me also go to Anthony. What about you from uh, the U.S.? Uh, did you also feel the heat coming all the way across the Pacific? <laughs> Absolutely, and in <laughs> fact, I did shop because two weeks ago I was speaking at a at an IPO conference in Shenzhen, and yeah. everybody was very excited about uh, Singles Day coming. So, All I think right. it was contagious. So I made it a point to order uh, stuff online on China's Singles uh, Singles Day. Right, without really going all the way into details about what exactly you ordered online, gentlemen. So let me ask you, putting jokes aside, you know. People talk about the status of the Chinese economy. Obviously, the numbers are quite impressive. From Alibaba, 268.4 billion. Did I recite that right? And also from Jingdong uh, or JD.com, it's also more than 200 billion. Impressive numbers really behind it. What does that say, Professor Thompson? Well, I mean, it sort of puts to rest a couple ideas like. Chinese consumer spending is slowing down in a major way or that the U.S. trade situation is you know, making American companies less excited about this. Some of the biggest winners over the last 24 hours have been American companies, Apple, Nike, Adidas. Mm -hmm. And American companies were, I think, the second you know, most successful companies participating in this. So uh, it's, all, you know, it's all guns blazing and it's all forward. Mm, interesting. 
Uh, did you take a look at the numbers, uh, Mr. Chan? Uh, what have you figured out about the status of the economy and who are the winners? Uh, mostly yesterday. Well, I think that when you look at these numbers, uh, not only is it the second consecutive uh, year of very impressive uh, sales, but it really tells you that the Chinese consumer is quite resilient despite all the noise that we hear about trade uncertainty, about uh, slowing economic growth globally. The, the Chinese consumer is still uh, quite resilient. And by the way, I should mention that we see similar uh, trends in the United States. So, so far, both economies are being supported by, the, by consumers. And more importantly, in China, mm. what we've seen over the last couple of years is that the economy is moving more and more towards being a more uh, consumer-driven economy. And these numbers certainly uh, uh, illustrate that. Mm. We're playing now some of the B roles. You know, how well, like yesterday, last night was like when the numbers were revealed. Of course, Jeffrey, you were there in Alibaba with all the colleagues over there looking at the, the miracle. But uh, for now, I want to go to you, Professor Gong. You know, uh, some of this has a lot to do with how technology is being applied in the process. Great online activity, as we all know, demands uh, quality tech support. In 2019, Alibaba said that, that their cloud computing system dealt with 544,000 orders every second at its peak. 1,360 times the number in 2009. If you look at the graphics over here, it's quite impressive. A lot of numbers, but what is really here at the stake, John? Well, in terms of uh, uh, order handling capacity, uh, certainly Alibaba has a lot of experience. As a, as a matter of fact, not many people know that Alibaba is also uh, China's largest cloud computing player. Okay. Uh, it has a huge market in that business. Uh, it's probably as more profitable than its online business, I mean, e-commerce business. So, uh, you know, Alibaba is not just not. Uh, e-commerce company. It's also a technology company these days. Uh, it offers a service to business customers. So, uh, you know, its ability to handle these orders is not so surprising to me. Uh, you know, it's especially operating in China as the largest e-commerce company. A huge number of orders. Uh, you know, China's e-commerce has grown to about 20% yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, total retail sales. Uh, and and uh, Alibaba probably occupies about, like, you know, 70% of the market. Right. So we're talking about, you know, 15, uh, around 15% of a, a consumer market consisting of 1.5 or 1.4 billion people. After That's this a big, lot of order. big, big <laughs> advertisement for Alibaba. <laughs> well, the reason why we mention Alibaba a lot is because Alibaba was the quote unquote the official inventor of this so called the double single day trade, uh, rather sales promotion. But if you look at that, it's now become a national campaign. So, uh, Mr. Chen, let me go to you about that. How do you see these kind of sales campaign work? whether it's in China or in the United States during Christmas, before Thanksgiving, you know, things like that. Oh, is this going to be sustainable? I think it is because uh, not only in China, but also certainly in America, and I've seen this uh, firsthand, uh, when more and more people reach, uh, reach some sort of a critical mass of, of things that people are doing, everybody else wants to join in. Uh, when you ask the question, did you shop on Singles Day, uh, here, uh, when people ask the question, did you shop on Prime Day for Amazon, uh, everybody wants to say yes. And so they almost shop on Prime Day because they know they're going to be asked and they don't want to be left out mm -hmm. of this process. So the more this builds, the more momentum it, uh, it continues. So I suspect that uh, online uh, uh, shopping will continue yeah. uh, to grow uh, moving forward. Now, we do see some uh, slight wrinkles in the uh, in the trends, uh, Gen Zs, for example, uh, now there's some talk that they also like to visit the, the brick and mortar stores. But by and large, that trend is pretty well entrenched that more and more people are getting excited about ordering Thank online. You. And why not uh, take advantage of it? Professor Thompson, is it more a trend or is it more a fad? I think. You know, on the consumer side, especially Chinese consumers, they change so quickly, right? I mean, shopping online, even at a big festival like Singles Day, is very different now than it was three to four years ago. It's a lot more about entertainment. It's a lot more about having fun, about watching live streaming, about chatting, not so much about let's just get discounts. I mean, it's moved well beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side is the fact that this is actually an incredibly important day for merchants and brands where they can roll out new products, 
find new customers, get a huge amount of data in one move that informs a lot of their strategy. So it's kind of a huge event for merchants as well. And that's not a fad. That's you know, pretty key to their strategies. Mm. Do you agree with that, Mr. Gong, that it's going to be part of the business culture. It's also going to be part of the you know, society culture to entertain and also buy at the same time. Well, I think for a long time, the online platform is indeed trying very hard to deliver a kind of a consumer experience that is sort of comparable to the online, uh, to the offline uh, brick model stores. I think uh, if you ask me, this trend is going to continue. Is it because of your generation or making that remark, or is it really uh, an economist judgment? Well, I, I think it's more from economy. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about a Caribbean. I mean, the, 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 the trade-off between uh, online stores and also uh, brick-and-mortar stores, even from a, a vendor's perspective, yeah. uh, there's got to be a equilibrium there. I mean, th these two platforms, actually, in my opinion, are quite complementary. I mean, the, uh, the brick-and-mortar stores have the advantages, the things they can do that the mm -hmm. platform cannot do, and the other way around as well. So I think, uh, you know, in the end, it's going to be some kind of a equilibrium where uh, the, the vendors, the, the brand owners, would like to have both platforms. Right. Well, if you think about the double singles day, mm -hmm. kind of tongue twister in a way, mm -hmm. but uh, Professor Townsend, mm -hmm. one of the things people talk about is its speed. If you look at the delivery service, hundreds of millions of packages being ordered and delivered on one day and more to come if you look at the services. But the question really also is about, you know, cash flow and sustainability issues. Uh, obviously, the speed is impressive, but all the packaging, all the delivery, all of this takes enormous amount of resources for a time when sustainability is a big issue for China and the others as well. How do you look at the efficiency when all of these factors are being counted in? Yeah, I think if you look at sort of the big themes for this year's Singles Day, one of the big four that Alibaba was talking about was green, green logistics. And I mean, I, I basically heard them speak very openly about this, that they need to be proactive and not reactive in this space. So, you know, on November 20th, there's the recycling day. And there's this movement towards, you know, sort of recycling and as a packaging. Everyone knows the packaging is a problem. Mm. It's just too many packages moving piling up. So they appear to be trying to take a leadership role in this. And I think this Singles Day was their first sort of big move in that regard. I think we're going to see a lot more over, over the next 12 months mm. on the whole sustainability uh, question. But of course, Alibaba is only one of those players, Professor Gong. There are many other players. Uh, whether they will follow the trend, the so-called tech for good, whether they are going to take a look at the sustainable development uh, branch of the whole campaign, uh, that is still a question mark. Oh yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, other vendors, uh, uh, other platform owners, say JD.com and other Pinduoduo, for example, they're also going to follow this trend. Uh, I think the, you know you're raising a very fundamental question. I mean, it, it, the, it, at the end of the day, it's about the trade of the distribution model, right? The traditional model, you have a middleman, you have a you know, big more there, and people go there. So it's a it's an aggregation function. Then you distribute to the end yeah. users. Now it's more of like a one-to-end model. You send packages. So you know what is the trade off there? Well, I mean this is one thing that uh, at the surface it looks like the online platform is, is sort of a wasteful, but I think the online platform has another very important function we haven't talked about. That is what's called C2M. In other words, it enables a customized, also personalized order. We all, know, we all know that, but the question really is about <coughs> sustainability here. We all know about the online shopping its advantages. So, yeah. uh, Mr. Chan, what about <coughs> for that? Uh, how is that likely to be portrayed and debated, do you think, in societies? Uh, particularly in a fast-moving society in China where, you know, some of the ideas now are becoming even more prominent than just goods itself. Well, I have no doubt that sustainability will, in fact, uh, be a, an important theme here in the United States. You're hearing more and more uh, noise that instead of sending orders in, in several small or large packages, uh, they're going to try to aggregate uh, all the orders of a consumer to make them more efficient and put them maybe in one delivery or one package. The recycling is, a, is another aspect of that. That's but right. I think every aspect of our society is in fact going to uh, start to take these things into account because sustainability is not just something 
that impacts the online business. It impacts other lines of That's business. That's true. And in terms of the other issue before about whether this is a trend or a fad, I think that the online companies want to continue to grow their, their business, and so they will have to continue to reinvent themselves, yeah. and whether they have to put more entertainment this year or next year, or do something else to entice the consumer to continue to buy. At the end of the day, these online companies want more sales, and they will do whatever it takes to generate those, more, those additional sales. That well said, but if you look at the future, you know, what is going to be the symbol of you know, the singles day eventually? Uh, settle down in China's uh, consumer culture. Uh, there has been at a certain development stage of society, so-called the consumerism vis-a-vis -vis, you know the progress of the society and different priorities of the society at different times. Professor Townsend, about that, you've been living in China for a long time. Mm -hmm. You've been doing research about the younger generation as well over the past few decades. Tell me more about your thoughts about the rising consumerism and China's search for different priorities at different times, particularly now. Right. I mean, we go back 10 years, and this was a lot about buying good stuff at a good price. I mean, it was a very simple transaction online, even at Singles Day. And then it became more about experience, having fun, a lot of content, KOLs, and more and more it's about improving your life. And it's this idea of creating a digital lifestyle, mm -hmm. which involves buying things, seeing things, having experiences, shopping. It's, it's all sort of growing into this aspect of our consumer behavior that is, it's not really just about buying stuff anymore, even though the GMV numbers are something that people pay a lot of attention to. And I think that's an area where China's leading because one of the things that happened this year at Singles Day is we saw Southeast Asia participate. Uh, there was a gala in Malaysia. There was a gala in Thailand. So this behavior that we're seeing evolve and grow in China, we're also seeing it start to go beyond China. And that's pretty interesting to watch. This type of behavior might become more of a global thing and not just a China type of activity. Mm. Professor Gong, of course, the EWTP has been something advocated by Jack Ma uh, for several years. And now, do you see that is happening around the world? And how is that crystallized by the Singles Day? By the way, what about the earlier question I asked to uh, Mr. Townsend about the future of this trend? If consumer, well, uh, Alibaba is going to keep expanding. It's going to expand overseas. It's going to expand into countries that it sees an advantage. So uh, there's no stopping of that. I mean, this company is incredibly growing very fast. And I, I remember, you know, the, the, the last quarter number is still something like, you know, annualized growth is about 40 percent for such a huge company. It's still going at that rate. Yeah. So I think this trend is going to continue. Now, consumerism itself, you know, I think. Uh, 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 Adam Smith is a very famous saying, you know, as a country, you know, it's, it's for people, for the individual, probably it's a good idea to save a little bit more, but for a country, uh, if everyone saves like this, it's going to be a disaster. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, economic growth means delivering better life. Uh, people need to spend some money, and it's, it's, it's good for the economy. Right. So, uh, as, we, as, as Townsend said you know, very well, that uh, put it very nicely, that as we move into this digital age, uh, the kind of a consumer experience associated with uh, the online platform is something that consumers Consumers indeed are looking for. Mr. Chan, consumerism, you experience that in the American societies, and there's different festivals, but whether that is still you know, part of a culture that's very much respected at today's time, it, it's a question mark. What about, you know, you see that trend also going on it in is. China, Professor? Yeah, uh, yes, it is, a, it is certainly a big uh, question mark, uh, but I, I think that the uh, uh, trend of consumerism is going to continue. For example, in the United States, when you look at the age group of 18 to 34 years old, more than half of those individuals don't have a steady significant other. So they fall into that category of singles day. And you can argue that it, it's something to make them feel good or something to make them feel more social. But with the uh, growth of that uh, group of, of more and more individuals that can be labeled or categorized as being single, uh, we're going to see this trend uh, picking up outside because birth rates are going down uh -huh. uh, all over uh, the world. And, and that means less people getting married and less uh, people uh, uh, having a significant other. So more <laughs> single people around the world. So. Uh, it only stands to reason Singles Day is going to catch on. Well, what can you say? You know, when you have three economists on the panel, they're going to say more income, more revenue, it's a better thing. Well, but uh, thank uh, you for so much. We are running out of time.
we have uh, Anthony Chan, Jeffrey Townsend, and John Gong. Sorry, we're running out of time. We really appreciate it.